So if you've come to the end of 2019 and you feel like you have not completed any of the things that you wanted to and you're starting to feel a little discouraged, then this video is for you. A lot of times I talk to other business owners and we start to talk about things that we want to accomplish and things that we have yet to accomplish and somebody will always bring up the word goals. I am a huge, huge supporter of planning goals for your business and your personal life, whether small or large, long term, short term, I am like literally hashtag gold digger right here. I feel like the hashtag was made for me and I wish I coined the phrase before somebody else did. But this is like my life. I love setting goals and coming to the end of this year and getting ready for a brand new year. I am fired up. I am ready to go. And I am just loving the whole process of reviewing what I did this year and setting my goals for next year. But what exactly is the advantage of setting goals? Why do we care or should we care? So many of my business owner friends don't want to set goals and the reason is, or at least the reason that they tell me is that they don't want to have to deal with the fact of not hitting the goal. My personal thought process on the other hand is I don't know how I'm going to hit a goal or accomplish something specific if I don't plan for it. So that is my whole thought process on life and on business and today I want to talk you through planning out your goals for 2019. So when I start planning goals, at one point in my life I would do a personal goals list and a business goal list and having been in business now for seven years doing it completely full-time for the last three and a half, there really is no personal life Michelle and business life Michelle so I just cram it all into one list now and say personal and professional goals for 2018 or 2019 is what we're planning now. So that's kind of how I do it, but you are free to do however many goal lists you want to do. Just don't overwhelm yourself too much. So when I start to consider what I want to do for my goals, these are some of the things that I think about. I'll usually plan an afternoon or a morning. Sometimes an evening could work, but most of the time I'm a little more excited about life in the morning and the afternoon because in the evening I'm just plain all tired. So usually I will set aside a morning or an afternoon and I will get some quiet time, no cell phones, no technology, and, and I will just sit and think and I will start to imagine what is something that I want to accomplish in the next year in my business and I just kind of let it marinate in my head and I think about it is this a financial goal is there a particular client that I would love to photograph um, a wedding for maybe a client at a different price point like something higher end or is there a location that I would love to photograph in would I love to photograph at this new gorgeous wedding venue in Chicago or further than that. Do I want to photograph a Hawaii wedding or a wedding in Paris? So I just kind of let my mind think about something that I think would be amazing to do in the next year. So those are specific things that I would put on my goal list. And don't worry, I am going to actually reveal some of my goals for, for this past year and we'll talk about it and I'll show you what I had listed. Another important thing that I might list on my goal list is some piece of equipment that I want to buy. So I might write down I need a new computer or I need a new camera body or I need two or three new lenses. Just depending on how you want to expand your business, it will keep you focused and maybe next time that I want to go do a shopping run at all the designer stores on Michigan Avenue in Chicago, I'll hold myself off because I know on my goal list that I'm trying to save up a few thousand dollars to purchase one or two new lenses. So the majority of the things that I put on my list are there really to give me some guidelines. In 2016, I started developing education for my business. So I started doing workshops, which was a huge deal of planning things and now I've hopped over to YouTube so there's definitely going to be some things this year talking about how I can bring my education to the next level. What can I do different with videos? What can I purchase different for equipment whether it's sound gear or different kinds of lenses or some sort of a gimbal so I can get out and carry things more because come on. Do we want to just stay at this desk for a whole nother year? Probably not. We want to mix things up. So as I'm sitting in my home or, or in just a little nook and, and letting all these ideas marinate, I just start writing ideas down. Sometimes you will notice not all of them are reasonable. Some of them are pretty far-fetched, but I do a pretty good job of keeping the majority of them very feasible and two or three that are a little bit out there that will force me to get pushed to a different level, a level of uncomfortability. So to get you an idea on how often 
and I look at my goals. Generally, it is about this time of year that I'm writing for next year. Once the goals are written, usually by the beginning of January or within the first two weeks of January, I do try to make it a continual habit to revisit my goals. The first time I'll check in on them is March 1st, and then it's basically the first of every month thereafter. Specifically, with photographers, as our clients inquire, we will usually take jobs, especially if we're feeling financially in need, we'll take just about any job that comes our way. But if you continue to do that and you continue on a path to do it, let's say you're trying to build more weddings and you've been in portraiture, the more portrait clients that you get, the less time that you will have to market yourself as a wedding photographer, to show images of wedding photography. So you could get several months in being extremely busy in portraits and then turn around and realize, oh goodness, it's already summer and I have booked no weddings and I have no plan to book a wedding because I've been busy with portraits for the last few months. So by checking in month by month and seeing where you're at and, and remembering what your main goal is, it can kind of take us off of what's right in front of us, this portrait client, and make us think a couple months in advance or even further in advance than that and realize, oh yeah, on this particular day when I'm home and I'm done with my editing, I am going to start building this part of my website for weddings, or I'm going to start planning a wedding style shoot on the side, or I'm going to reach out to other wedding photographers and start to do some second shooting or find out if I can. Just by having everything written down, it really keeps our minds focused on what is most important to us. And hopefully at the end of several months and by the end of that next year, you will have successfully completed your big goals, small goals, any goals, hopefully all of your goals by that time. So let's see, what kind of stuff do I put on my goal list? So this year I had 13 personal and professional goals that I wanted to do. There are specific numbers in here of financials, but I'm not going to reveal those. But one I did have to hit a specific financial goal on my calendar year for 2018. I think I'm really close. I'm actually not sure where I'm at exactly, because I have booked some business here in December, but this is specific, booked in 2018 business for 2018 tax year. Hopefully as the month is wrapping up, I will check on that. Um, but usually I could be off by a couple thousand, hopefully over, but sometimes under. I don't beat myself up about that too much though. My main goal for putting that financial goal in writing is to break it up into 12 different segments for each month. So hypothetically, if my goal is 120,000, then I already know I would like to book $10,000 worth of business every single month. So you can understand how that can really keep you hustling because every day that you don't book a job, I just hear like, oh gosh, I really have to book something big the next day or the day after that or the day after that. So keeping those kind of goals really motivates me to get out of my bed and get to work. <laughs> So another goal that I had this particular year was to have a savings of a certain dollar amount in my account. So in a photography business, you're paying for a lot of things. There's a lot of insurance, there's a lot of equipment that you're carrying, taxes are absolutely ridiculous, but then there's outside products that we get also, like wedding albums, flash drives, any kind of gifts for clients or cards. The things can add up. So I did make a specific goal for myself that I wanted to have a certain amount in my savings account for my business by the end of the year. Year. That was something that was really important to me and that really helped having that written down because it made me think about how much I could spend. It really helped motivate me to not be so excessive with my business. Another thing that I put on my specific goal list was to book a certain amount of weddings for next year in this year. So obviously any amount of business that you can book the year before, it guarantees what kind of money you're going to make and how busy you're going to be in the next year. But a really great thing about putting this kind of a number goal on your goal list is that it again helps you hustle. So I take the opportunities when I see them because I know I have to be accountable to my goal list by the end of the year or by the end of the month when I check in on it and I want to make sure that I am constantly pushing myself to succeed and get as many weddings as possible. I did have on my list contract a destination wedding in a tropical location. So I specifically put some focus on my website and in my Instagram page to talk about the fact that I will do destination 
graduation weddings. A few things that I accomplished this year is that I wanted to get a brand new computer for editing a desktop computer. I wanted to redo my website. I wanted to learn Lightroom a little bit more and get really comfortable on it. I wanted to create custom wedding magazines for my clients. I wanted to be a part of three styled shoots this year and I also wanted to start my YouTube channel successfully. All of these things I can scratch off my list and if you could see my list they are scratched off on there because that excites me when I can do that. But think about any one of those things. I couldn't do any of those overnight. Start a YouTube channel? Um... No, that didn't happen overnight. And believe me, this has been a really difficult journey for me because especially when I'm editing, I can't stand the way uh, I talk and you should hear how much I have to edit out. So I am just getting more comfortable in front of the camera, but I'm not there yet. This has been quite a journey for me and something that I've had to consistently work at every week all throughout this whole year. Another thing that I'm super proud of is redoing my website. I had a completely different website at the beginning of the year and I actually purchased a template and redid it myself and I absolutely adore it. I think it was perfect. It's exactly what I wanted and I'm really proud of that, that my clients can go to my website and see something that I feel is worthy of the caliber of work that I do. So I can't hit this point home enough that you really have to plan for your success. Plan for the things that you want to accomplish. Yes, we can all continue on our business and just do whatever and let the opportunities come our way, but you might be feeling discouraged right now that you let that happen to 2018 and the exact way that you can avoid that into 2019 so that in December of 2019 you're not sitting here like great it happened again. Now I'm going to have to get a full-time job because I couldn't make this work. We do not want that at all. The best way that you can accomplish everything that you want is to write it down, to plan for it, to check in with those goals, and to implement things in your life and in your business to make that happen. I had some other personal goals that were on my list as well. Things about drinking more water and working out, not eating out so much, purchasing a new home. There were so many things that I wanted to accomplish and I really did. I mean, I'm still not great at drinking water, but I do drink water. <laughs> I drink it more than I used to. So honestly, I hope this video has helped you and motivated you to at least write down a few goals. And even if you don't want to write down three, let's just go with one. What is one thing that you want to accomplish in 2019? If you don't want to write it anywhere else, I encourage you, write it down in the comments below. Let this be our time capsule. As you're going through 2019, come back to my video and see, did you do it or are you starting to do it? Are you implementing things into your personal life and into your business life to make this one goal happen? So I want to make my goal right here. I'm going to have lots of goals, but there is one specific goal that I want for 2019. So my hope is that at December of 2019, I have 1,500 subscribers on this channel. That seems like a lot for me, yes, because I've had a personal goal this whole year of getting 10 new subscribers a week. That's going to be almost double. That's going to be double. Basically, it's going to be double of what I'm used to, but I'm going to see if I can do it. But because I've just made myself accountable to you guys, I'm going to have to commit to this. So my goal, my big goal that I'm going to commit to you guys is to have 1,500 subscribers on this channel by December 31st, 2019. I'd love to hear your goals down below, and believe me, if you want me to follow up with you, I will do that. And feel free to brag a little bit. Tell me what your biggest goal for 2018 was and if you accomplished it. I'd love to hear. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Feel free to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.